Yo what's up guys Tanmay here for Simple Snippets back with another video tutorial on C++ programming especially the object oriented paradigm now in this video tutorial we'll talk more about inheritance and this is specially going to be mostly practical and we'll directly go to the code because one video before this that is in previous video tutorial we discussed the inheritance concept and we saw a lot of theory around it we saw the different types of inheritance and we also saw the modes in which inheritance can occur that is the access specifiers so most of it was theory and in the end we also saw a very basic program example so i thought let's let's take this to a practical aspect and practical approach and let's try to understand more about how access specifiers work in inheritance and basically in object oriented programming so that will be very clear when we actually see a program example so we'll directly move on to the programming part now if you haven't watched the previous video tutorial and if you don't know what inheritance is and the basic theory about it you might want to check out this video on the top right corner also make sure you subscribe to this channel because there is a lot of video content related to information technology programming languages and other concepts and other subjects being covered on to this channel and if you are new to this channel consider subscribing so with that being said let's get started so quickly open up your dc++ ide because we'll directly start off with the practical aspect of inheritance and we'll go ahead and type out this code from scratch so i have already written down the basic boilerplate of the c++ code so you can just pause this video and type this out so in this video what i'm going to showcase you is how public protected and private access specifiers work and how they are different and i'll try to show you programmatically how it works and what happens when we inherit a base class in this different three modes that is public mode private mode and protected mode so if you have seen the previous video we already know that inheritance can happen in these three different modes that is the derived class can inherit base class properties in three different modes so we'll see how they differ from each other and what are the restrictions that are applied at each access specifier level and in general we'll also see the different access specifiers that are the three access specifiers so let's start off with creating a basic class so what we'll say is class my base class so there's a simple class and inside this i'm going to create the three different access specifiers so first one is going to be public Inside that I'm going to declare a variable int x then I'm going to say protected in that I'm going to create one more variable that is int y and then lastly in private I'll create int z or int z now in the public side I'm going to create the constructor that is the default constructor now I have also covered what is constructor and destructor in this video tutorial you can see on the top right corner so I'll say my base class and inside this I'll assign x as 0, y as 0 and z as 0. So the constructor and the functions that is member functions usually come inside the public part because the functions directly access the data members. So in object oriented uh, programming the concept is like the data members are usually kept private or protected depending upon if you are going to perform inheritance or not. They are not made they are not directly made public and the functions inside the class that is the member functions are kept public. So the public functions can directly interact with the data members and not any function which is outside the class. So this adds a level of security. So that's why all the constructors and are in public and constructor has to be in public only. Okay so so let's let's keep this class as it is for now so we have my base class you can see I have created three parts public protected and private inside each I have one variable each so int x is in public int y is in protected and int z is in private so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an outside function so I'll say avoid my outside function so this function is outside the class and I'm going to pass object of this class that is my base class obj and what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to directly print int x y and z individually so I'll say c out x colon obj dot x similarly I'll try to print y and I'll print print z so what I'm trying to do is my outside function is directly trying to access data member of this object. Now according to object oriented programming principles or conventions there has to be a function that is there has to be some member function that has to access the data members. So what what essentially should happen that we should have an error over here. So what I'll do is I'll first try to print x directly because x is public and since it is public essentially this should work directly. So let's go to the main function and try to create an object of this class that we just created my base class. I'll say obj1 and once the object is created the default constructor is called and all these values are set to 0. In fact let's try to set them as 5 so that when we print the values you can see them. And then I'm going to call our function that we just created. So here in the main function I give that function call my outside function and inside it is asking for an object so I'll say obj1 so I'm passing this object. 
So what should happen is this object obj1 which is just created over here has these values x equals to 5, y equals to 5 and z equals to 5 as data members. This is passed in this function and then we are printing for now the x value of the object. So let's see if this works. Let's try to save this, execute, compile and run. And there you go, you can see the x is printed as 5 which means that the data member was directly accessed because it was public. Now what I'm going to do is I'm trying, I'm going to comment this out and let's see if y can be printed. Now y is inside protected section so it is a little restricted. So let's see if this works i'll just save this and go to execute compile and run and there you go you can see that it is an error you can see int my base class y is protected which means that you cannot directly print it over here or you cannot directly say object dot data member you need a function that has to access it so inside the public part i can say void print protected data and inside that i'll say c out y colon y and then so i created a function inside the public part which can now access the y part that is the data inside y so instead of obj.y let's try to see if this works so i'll say print protected data save this compile and run and we are getting an error so let's see what error is this okay we are trying to use the extraction operator oh sorry insertion operator here which is not being allowed so let's let's just cut that cut this out and let's handle that inside this function so anyways we are going to get this message so just close this save this and let's hit compile and run so there you go you can see now the y value is printed because we are accessing the y value using this void print protect data method inside our outside function so we cannot directly print and similarly for if i just comment this out and if i go and try to print z value which is inside private it would give the same error because private is also a restricted access specifier and you cannot directly access data members that is z using the dot operator with the object so you need one more function over here print private data which you have to create over here to print value of z so this was within the class. So this is how these access specifiers differ. And here you can see protected and private pretty much restricted the printing, but there is a slight difference in protected and private. And we'll see that when we actually create one more class. So let me just comment this out. Now we'll create one more class. So we have base class over here. Now in below that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create class, my derived class. And then I'm performing inheritance using the colon operator. So this is the syntax. And first I'll publicly inherit this class that is my base class. Just copy this and paste it over here. And then regular code for derived class. Now inside derived class, when we are publicly inheriting the properties from my base class, all these things are going to come as it is over here, which means that public int x is going to be public int x over here. That is this. this part is going to come as it is all of it over here except the constructor so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to try and create object of my derived class inside the main function and then again let's try to print or access the data members which have come inside this my derived class from my base class so my derived class also has int x int y and int z and int x is public int y is protected and int z is private so their access specifier doesn't change because we are inheriting it publicly so essentially we have int x let me just cut this out we have public int x we have protected int y and we have private int z inside this my derived class. Now I don't have to again type it out because this is the beauty of inheritance that we don't need to type code again and this provides reusability and maintainability. So to prove that let's try to create an object of my derived class and I'll say obj2. Now, since x here is public, we should directly be able to access it. So I'll, what I'll do is inside the main function itself, instead of creating an outside function, let's just not use this, directly try to access it in the main function. So I'll just see out x colon obj2 dot x. So let's see if this works and let's try to execute compile and run. And there you go, you can see x is printed as it is because 
x value in the derived class is also public because we are publicly inheriting it now what i'm going to try to do is now of course protected y is not going to come over here so if i say object 2 dot y it is going to throw an error because it is protected and you cannot directly access it and private z is not coming inside this class itself and i made a mistake over here so what i'm trying to say is private z is never going to come inside my derived class because it is private so anything that you don't want to inherit in your derived class has to be inside the private part so my derived class will only have two variables int x and int y and not z so i made a mistake over there so now what we are going to do is let's try to inherit this in a protected way now when i say protected the public int in the base class becomes protected int in the derived class protected y stays as protected y and private doesn't come as it as you know because it is not going to go to the derived class at all so to prove that now we have performed inheritance in a protected mode let's try to print the x value let's try to save this and let's try to compile and run and it should throw an error so as you can see int my base class is inaccessible because we just perform inheritance in a protected mode int x and int y inside the derived class are now become protected now lastly if we if we perform inheritance in a private mode the int x and int y are going to come int z is not going to come in derived class because it is already private in the base class but int x and int y will be inheriting in the derived class in a private way so inside derived class they are becoming private so private x and private y again if i try to access x it will not be allowed but now since both of these are private if i create a third class class my derived class 2 or class 3 and try to inherit this first derived class in any mode be it private public or protected so i'll say public since these two are private in the first derived class they will become or they will not be accessible in the third derived class because they are already become private so this is why when we inherit the first derived class as private the next level of derived class will never inherit those properties so that is why in most cases when we want to perform multi-level inheritance that is there is one base class below that there is one child class or derived class which is inheriting directly from the base class and then at level 2 there is one more child or derived class which is inheriting properties from level 1 derived class so in that case usually the inheritance is in public mode because otherwise then the last derived class that is the third or the second level of derived class will never inherit the other properties if it is in a private mode if the first derived class is in private mode so that is the difference that I wanted to show you programmatically so so if I inherit this in a private way and now if I create a variable of my derived class 3 over here and try to access any object it will again throw an error if I save this and say compile and run you can see that again in my base class is inaccessible error is throwing up so that's how inheritance works and these are the three different modes that I wanted to show you programmatically so in the previous video we saw a big table and we saw the different program and we also understood how it works in a theoretical way but we did not see a program so that's what I wanted to show you so bottom line of the access specifiers is that the public part is accessible in the class and outside the class directly the protected access specifier is only for inheritance purpose so it is slightly restricted than public but not as restricted as private because the derived class gets those properties which are in pro pro protected mode as well and the last access specifier that is private is very restricted that is whatever you write inside the private be it a function or be it a data member it will never be inherited by the derived class so these are the three different levels of access specifiers and now you know why protected is created specially for inheritance similarly inheritance can happen in three different modes that is public private and protected and we've seen the three differences as well in the programming part when inheritance happens in public mode all the properties from the base class come as it is inside the derived class except the private part so leaving the private properties public and protected come inside the derived class as public and protected when we perform inheritance in a protected mode public and protected properties become pro protected properties in the derived class and the private is not gonna in get inherited and when we inherit in a private mode public protected properties become private properties in the first level of derived class and again the private properties of the base class are never inherited so yeah this this is a little bit tricky but once you start coding and like get a hang of it it is very easy to understand since there are not a lot of options there are only three different modes and these these questions are sometimes asked in interview that explain the difference between public protected private and they usually ask an example as well so this is why I thought of covering a practical aspect and practical example so yeah i hope this concept of access specifiers and the different modes in which inheritance happens is now clear in a practical way as well so if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to this channel peace